This is the Christian life. You are not made for yourself. I'll read something to you from <laughs> Glory to God. Psalm 16. Are you there? Okay. Read verse 6. One more time. One more time. There are different kinds of children. And um, in the same family, you could have different kinds of children. I didn't say different children. There would definitely be different children. I mean kinds. Sometimes in the family, the same family, you have one child that believes the father hates him. He just believes it. You can't convince him that his father loves him. Not even his father can convince him. He just believes it, that his father hates him. There are many things for him to look at. The way his father shouts at him. The way his father beats him when he does something wrong. The way his father refuses to give him whatever he's asking for. Even the room in the house that they put him. All these things he will consider as hatred. You have another one who believes in spite of everything that he might go through with the same with the other one that his father loves him you have the one that believes that the mother hates him or a daughter that believes the mother hates her you have the one that believes the father loves him, the mother loves him. Just that way. How do they come to these conclusions? Thoughts. Thoughts. Thoughts are powerful things, I tell you. Thoughts. The thoughts, they accommodate. Where do the thoughts come from? The Bible shows us that thoughts can come from number one, our own reasoning based on the information that we have acquired. Our own reasoning based on the information that we have acquired. Whether from our environment, from what we read, from what someone said, from what we watched, whatever it is, information acquired by us. Then also, Satan, the Bible shows us that Satan can plant thoughts in our minds. Because thoughts have spiritual potency. Are you following this? Thoughts can be thrown to your mind. Thoughts are information clothed with imagination. Or suggestions clothed in images. And thoughts also can come to us as inaudible voices. God also 
sense of thoughts. So thoughts can come from us based on our own acquired information. Thoughts can come from Satan or his demons. Okay? Satan or his demons. And thoughts can come to us from God and his angels. Praise God. Now, you know, the human person is a spirit being. You are a spirit. You're not a body. Your body that you see is not you. Your body is the house in which you live. So the real you are not a body. You're a spirit. You live in the body. That's why when somebody dies, his body may be complete. Everything may be complete in his body. So what, what, what happened? His spirit, the real person, has gone out. Now here, you know some people ask stupid questions because of the limitation of their reasoning. The human spirit is not the body that you see. And so sometimes you have people who, because they have uh, studied in some uh, school for the brains only, they think they got some knowledge. So they say, now, you say that the human spirit lives in the body and they can they can sketch for us the anatomy of the human being and they can show us everything and they can say hey come on here tell me where does the spirit stay I mean this head is full of this 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 so there's no space you know let it go to the body and show you everything in the body. Say, now, now, there's no space. Where does the spirit stay? Tell me, tell me. And they're like, I got you. But then guess what? They missed the whole thing. The word spirit is synonymous with the word wind. Can you see that? Wind, which means it functions with the character of the wind. You see that? Now, what does that tell you? Imagine how much space there is in you, your nostrils, your eyes, even your skin. Air can get into you in any way. If air can get into you, the spirit can get into you. Because it's the character of the spirit. And you don't use physical sizes to describe a spirit. So the Bible gives us the description of the spirit of God of the human spirit, of Satan, of demonic spirits in spiritual language. So we never should be carried away by the thoughts and ideas of people who only understand sense knowledge. All, all that you see is not all there is. Always remember that. All you see is not all there is. And if you studied your science truly, you would know that. Hallelujah. So I said that to say this. Your spirit, you live in the body. And God communicates with your spirit. He communicates with your spirit. 
you know God from your spirit. You can't know God from your mind. That's why the word of God is revelation. The word of God is revelation. He reveals himself through his word and he reveals himself to your spirit. In Romans chapter 10 verse 10, the Bible says, with the heart man believes unto righteousness. You see, with the heart, not with your mind. You believe with your heart. You believe with your heart. God's word is God's instruction. God's word is God's information. And when God gives you his word, now you gotta understand, there are certain things that you don't argue with because They call what they call truths. You don't argue with truth. You argue with assumptions. When something has become truth, you don't argue with it because it is a truth. Now, until there is a greater truth, you hold on to that truth. One plus three is what? Four. It is a truth. And there is no other truth beyond one plus three equaling four. Until there is a greater truth We've got to hold on to that. I mean, for example, the other day, well, Pluto was sacked. You remember? Some of you didn't know about it. We used to talk about uh, how many planets. Huh? And uh, Pluto was one of them. And last year, Pluto was sacked from being a planet. And you know, he just... He, all your life you believe Pluto was a planet and somebody from somewhere just said now it's no more and you're like God where am I well that's the word you see but in Christ his truth is revealed hallelujah and we need to know when there is a present truth like there was a truth in the Old Testament and that truth became obsolete when Christ came and brought us a new truth. Glory to God. The former truth was, if God's going to bless you, you must obey all of these commandments that Moses brought. If you fail to obey all these commandments, these blessings will not come on you. But the curse will come on you that was the truth until Jesus came and lived and died for us and was buried for us and God raised him from the dead and a new truth came into reality hallelujah so there is a new truth and this new truth doesn't say that God is going to bless you if you obey God That was the former truth but you see a lot of people are still living they're living their lives according to the former truth and that's their trouble there is a new truth this new truth is if any man is in Christ he is a new creation now this is so powerful that second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 he says if anyone is in Christ he is a new creation he didn't say the person is going to be a new creation he didn't say the person will become a new creation if his troubles hard enough he didn't say the person will be a new creation if he pleases God he said if you are in Christ as far as God is concerned to be in Christ means to receive Christ as Lord into your heart by the confession of his Lordship upon your life and he catapults you by his own doing into the kingdom of God 
that means when you proclaim the lordship of jesus over your life you are automatically catapulted into the kingdom of god you become a member of his family that's his job your job is to announce declare his lordship over your life by declaring in faith i believe that jesus christ was raised from the dead and i confess with my mouth that jesus christ is lord of my life now when you do that sincerely he fulfills his part you are catapulted into christ and christ is a person and christ is a place you see that so suddenly you are awakened in the realm of the spirit you are awakened to the fatherhood of god you know him now as your father now here's the point if any man be in christ the present truth if any man be in christ he is a new creation whether he feels like it or not is not important the question is have you believed that God raised Jesus from the dead yes sir have you confessed the Lordship of Jesus Christ over your life yes sir if you can trust yourself that you meant what you said trust him that he also meant what he said because he said that if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that he also can be trusted to fulfill his part by accepting you receiving you into himself as his son as his child one that belongs to him and he will impact you with eternal life so if you believe that you did yours and you were honest with it believe in the same way that he answered you and he was honest with himself and that's it so from that moment you can boldly proclaim because if you don't boldly proclaim you are making God a liar it means you trust yourself that you pray to God but he didn't listen to you he didn't he didn't fulfill his part he said if you believe that I raised Jesus from the dead if you believe that he was wounded for your transgressions bruised for your iniquities don't you understand that that he died for you if you believe that and confess that he is Lord of your life God says eternal life the life and nature of God will be imparted automatically at that hour into your heart because it says he that believeth hath eternal life they didn't say shall have hath the believer has the moment you believe the moment you have not to believe that he has given you eternal life is to call him a liar see that so you say I confess I boldly confess say that with me. I boldly confess that I haven't believed in Jesus Christ have eternal life in my spirit praise God that's it now here's the deal now that I'm a child of God and I have his life hey come on what else will I ever need nothing you, you, you get the idea now imagine if it's true that he died for me and he was raised from the dead for me if it's true and it is true if it's true that I have received his life and nature into my spirit by his word as he prophesied and decreed. If it's true, why would I need to do anything to be blessed? Doesn't make sense. Come on, talk to me. It doesn't make sense. If I'm a child in this family, then I'm an heir in this family not because i deserve it but because i'm born here come on somebody did you get what i said the reason god's blessings belong to you is not because you're doing well
Not because you're serving him faithfully. Do you, do you understand? This is the reason many faithful Christians can't understand why with their faithfulness, they're nice to God. They use their scarf very well on Sunday. You know, I mean, they don't do anything wrong. They are clean and cool. They are, I mean, they're cool. They're, they're nice. They can't understand why their prayers don't seem to always get answers. They can't understand. I mean, like uh, somebody, someone's telling me a story, something happened in Benin City. Very interesting. You know, we had this, this meeting in Benin, and there was a lady uh, who, who received healing and came up the platform to testify. And I was laying hands on people as they came up to the platform. And now came up this lady and uh, I, I laid hands on her and uh, she went under the power and I said the Lord asked me to give you one millionaire and uh, of course she was in shock then I said the Lord says I should increase it to two millionaire now she almost passed out okay now after the service here's the real thing this is what I want you to listen to after the service someone was carried by a, a taxi driver who happened to have been in the meeting but didn't know this other fellow was in that meeting and said I saw a wonderful thing today said an amazing thing and was telling the story he said you know Pastor Chris was in the meeting today in Christ's embassy a woman came up the platform didn't even ask for anything and Pastor Chris said God told him to give the woman one million naira and then two million naira yeah. then he said I have been asking God for only 65,000 He said, I've been asking God for only 65,000. He hasn't given it to me yet. Now think about it. The woman didn't even ask for nothing. And, and, and he had been asking for 65,000. They get it. So he's wondering, I mean, isn't it easier for God to give me 65,000 than to give that lady 2 million? Praise God. That's the way many people are. You see, they wonder why the little miracle they're asking God for, they're not getting it. And then there's this other fellow who, in their minds, is not even a very, is not a serious Christian. He's getting all these miracles. That's what makes them sometimes to say that the miracles must be fake. Because we are not acting like them in the way they think we should act like them. You know? So the miracles must be fake. There must be something we're doing. How can we have all that money? We must be stealing somehow. We, 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 we must be into some drug business or something. We must be doing something wrong and getting all this money. There must be some deception. So all the time you get all these people who come into some of our meetings and they're trying to find out where the catch is. Every little noise they hear, they turn around. <laughs> you, you think they're listening to the message. They're not. They're all the time looking for what, where is the catch? And as the ushers bring the up envelopes, they examine, examine, examine. You know, they're trying to find out what is it we've been doing. Glory to God. But I want to show you those things that we believe that have made our lives beautiful. Now, don't get, don't, don't, don't let anybody deceive you. You know, sometimes some people say, ah, oh, they're writing things about Pastor Christ. Listen, all of those things they write, good or bad, they don't make any difference. 
Are you hearing me? When they write something good, I don't care to see it. When they write something bad, I don't care to see it. You know why? Because they are not a factor. <laughs> you see? They are not a factor. So be smart not to even give them a hearing. Because you see, people who are at the bottom always want to drag other people to stay with them. As long as you are with them, you are their friend. You start making progress and see, you become an enemy. If we were a little church, like somebody said, a minister one time said, uh, Pastor Chris was in one ramshackle building some years ago. How can he say that God gave him money to do all the things he's doing? So I knew him a few years ago where he was having a church. And he's trying to prove I got the money from somewhere else. He says, is it not the same God that was with him then? Why didn't the God give him that money at that time? Brother, I was growing my faith all that time. Don't you understand? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So you see, there are things that we believe. And they are in the scripture. I will show you the one I want that I asked you to open. You already read it. This has got to make sense to you. It has to make sense to you. Hallelujah. It's got to make sense to you. So let's read again Psalm 16 and verse 6. One to go. The lines are falling onto me in pleasant places. Yea. A goodly heritage all right now you know the Bible says for us to study okay and studying means that you should exercise some painstaking effort to look through the word and see exactly exactly what it is saying I read lots of translations in my study so I can get all the shades and I like to also study the original from where the translations were gotten so that I can know why the translator said what he said and whether or not he's right praise the Lord so let me read to you the King James that you read and then I'll read to you another version I'll read the contemporary English version all right and I want you to listen to the King James first the lines have fallen on to me in pleasant places Yea, I have a goodly heritage. Now, what's it saying? It says the lines have fallen unto me. You know, when you can read this kind of a thing. Many of you have read Psalm 16. You've read the Psalms. You probably don't know what this means. It says the lines have fallen unto me in pleasant places. That means, this man is talking about that um, there was, there was uh, an apportioning of property to different people. And they said, from here to here to here is for John Boo. From here to here to here to here to here is for Joan. And from here to here to here to here is for Andrew. And Andrew found out that his own land, his own property had a a treasure in it he found out there was oil he found out there was diamond he dug a little more and found out there was gold 
He's got oil. He's got diamond. He's got gold in his own property. Then he says, the lines. That means the borders. He says, the lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. That means an awesome inheritance. The lines are falling unto me in pleasant places. So I found out my inheritance is better than the one Joanne got and the one that John Bull got. And I had nothing to do with it. It fell unto me. You see that? It fell my lot. Praise God. Now, I want to, that's what he's saying. Now imagine if your life, many years, this has been your contemplation. Like it's been my contemplation. You know, why the other guy was fighting with God. Oh God, do it for me, Lord, do it for me, Lord. Do it. I was saying the lines are falling onto me in pleasant places. See, I was spending time digging my gold. You see that? Playing with my diamonds, pulling out my oil, while he's asking God, oh, oh God. John Bull and Joanne, they can't understand, but the lines are falling onto me. You see the mentality? Our lives cannot be the same. Our lives cannot be the same. I see all the good things in my land. And they can't find nothing. So they're going to live a life of complaining. And worrying. And someone said, well, so whose fault is it? Is it not the person that gave them the land? Yes. So what do you do? Find out what's in your land. The oil was not on the top surface. The gold was not on the top surface. The diamonds were not on the top surface, brother. Find out what you got in your land. Listen to this. Let me read it again to you and then I'll read to you the, the contemporary English version. The lines are falling under me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. That's my confession. That's my confession. Say that with me. The lines are falling under me in pleasant places. I have a goodly heritage. If you thought that was wonderful, listen to the CEV give us a clearer picture of what he hears. Listen, 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 pay close attention. Mm. Even to think about this, it reminds me of Ossie's song. Let, let, me, let me read it to you. Some of you have seen it already. You, you feel like stretching out, you know? He says, you make my life pleasant and my future is bright. Now, imagine if you knew this and it became your contemplation and your confession. Your life would be different from the other guy who's, oh God, bright in my future, bright in my future. You see, you're looking older. The more you pray like that, the older you, bright in my future, oh, bright in my future. He won't brighten your future. He doesn't do it like that. He has already done something. And my future is bright. So you go, Lord, you make my life pleasant. And you know, the moment you make that confession from your spirit, everything lines up with your confession. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hey, hey. Let me read something more to you so you get this. In the 11th verse, it says, Thou will show me the path of life. Have you seen it? Thou would show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures, pleasures forevermore. Ask, why? Ask, ask someone, why is your life so hard? You see, this is not God's plan. It's not God's plan for your life to be so hard. So he says, I've lived a very hard life. You are the problem. You know, the times people ask us, is it really as you are saying it? <laughs> what are you listening to? You want another book that tells you something different? So I say, yeah, but it's not even in the same Bible. It's in the same Bible. It says that suffering, Christian, Christian people can suffer. They can't even quote it right. Say, there's, there's suffering. We suffer with Christ. Okay. <laughs> okay, how are you suffering for Christ now? Or suffering with Christ or suffering for him? How? how? Say, um, they go through hardship. What type of hardship? Sometimes, someone might not have money. Okay, 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 okay. If, 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 if someone sometimes does not have money, what does that have to do? Eh, you won't be happy now. You are wrong. That's where you are wrong. That you don't have money at the time has nothing to do with the state of your spirit. It's got nothing to do with the state of your spirit. The Bible says, out of your heart are the issues of life, which means from that heart of yours is where the money will come from, is where everything that you require in life will come from. Why do you destroy the source it's in your spirit. So recondition your spirit. Reprogram your spirit to deliver to you all the necessities of life that you want. Somebody said, well, God doesn't answer uh, our prayers of our wants. He meets our needs. Okay. What is the meaning of whatsoever you shall ask the father in my name that will i do that the father may be glorified if you shall ask anything in my name anything any 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 it doesn't answer your wants it's your need you don't pray for your need you only ask for those things you want you don't ask for your needs he told us already don't you know that my father knows the things that you need he said the birds of the air they don't ask for anything he says your father feeds them he said you are of more value than many sparrows that means for the things you need need you don't have to ask he says your father knows which means the ones you are asking for are the ones the additions those things you like to have you see you see the reason now why some people only well, i have only been asking God for only sixty-five thousand. he didn't give me because he needs it and by the time imagine if you were asking god for only your house rent you are selfish oh god my house rent oh i'm only at 150,000. it's my house oh god give me one hundred and fifty thousand. is that all you're asking god for no wonder he's not listening to you because you need more than 150,000. The 150,000 does not include your tithe. If you took out your tithe, you can't pay the rent. So why are you asking God for only 150,000? 
add your tithes to it. And that's not all. And that's not all. What about all the, the other seeds you want to give? What about putting money into Rhapsody of Reality? Listen, brothers and sisters, get big enough to make the right demands of a heavenly father that's rich enough to supply. Be bold. You, 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 think, well, you think it's a kind of humility where you say, oh God, I'm not asking for too much. I'm, asking for, I'm only asking for my transport fare to go to work. God will say, so all you think about is yourself. All you think about is yourself. What about becoming big enough to help some other people in your area? What about that? What about that? God wants your dreams to be big enough to make him a part of your dream. If your dream is too small, he can't be a part of it. God doesn't like small dreams. He doesn't like to be a part of small dreams. Ah, you're getting it now. Make it big enough for God to be a part of it. No, there are different kinds of businessmen. If you, go, if you go to the bank and you say that you need a certain amount of money, there's an official they will pass you to. If you're asking for 200,000, they say, go to that desk. They say, what, what do you do? You say, I, I do that. Say, okay, we'll go to that desk. If you come and say, um, you need 5 billion, say, what do you do? What do you do? By the time you explain what you do, and it looks like this is a guy that knows what five billion is, is it, um, uh, hold on. They want to call a higher official to come and see you. Then the, is it, um, can we, oh, okay, please come. They don't discuss with you at the open office. <laughs> can you say it now? So if your, if your, if your demands are going to be attended to, at the throne room, they must demand the attention of the throne room, brother. You get it. Where somebody shout hallelujah. Man, oh man. Hallelujah. Make your dream bigger. Oh, glory to God. Lift your hands toward the heaven. Speak in other tongues. Pray in the Holy Ghost. 